Hi, everybody. This week, we are going to be talking about forces. Forces you can think about as being a push or a pull. This week, we're thinking more about forces as being, as being a, a pull rather than a push. And we're also going to be talking about forces as vectors. Yes, forces are vectors. They have a magnitude and a direction. So for your pre-lab this week, you've got a couple of uh, essentially vector addition problems, but we're thinking about them as forces. But for the first two of these problems, we are going to use a simulation website called FET, P-H-E-T. And we might be using this a lot next semester too, depending on um, how things go with uh, you know, the whole coronavirus situation. So let me show you what I'm talking about here for the simulation that you're going to use to do your first two pre-lab problems. Okay, so you'll see here on the Canvas quiz for our face-to-face um, -face lab two pre-lab force equilibrium. Um, I'm going to have a little section here that says for the first two questions, you will use the simulation at this following website. So you'll click that link and it will take you there and I'll have this video um, embedded right here. And we'll use this to answer questions one and two here. So I'm going to click on that link. So here's the simulation we are being taken to. You're going to want to do the exact same thing that I do right here. Okay. And so what I'm going to do before I do anything else, see down here in the corner, um, we can break up these vectors into their X and Y components, which is what um, the simulation is trying to do now. If I click on this plus sign next to the base vectors, I'm going to see um, the X and Y components of my A and B vectors broken up here for us. But instead of looking at those, what I want to do is click on this button that's next to, in the lower right corner, next to this um, vector that's breaking it up into the X and Y components. I'm going to click on this pink one that gives the magnitude of our vector and it gives the angle that that vector is with respect to the positive X axis. Okay, so I'm going to click there and then your um, vectors will become pink, except for one black one here. And then um, instead of labeling A, B, and C, they're labeled as D, E, and F. Okay, so if you, you're doing that, then, then um, you're good to go for these first two questions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you can drag your coordinate system around. So I'm gonna move it so it's right in the middle of my page here. That's pretty good. Yeah, right in the middle of my page. So you can click on these vectors and drag them around. Um, I'm gonna leave them right here for now and show you up here that um, there are three different vector addition equations that the simulation can solve for us. Okay, so using our vectors d, e, and f, it can solve for us d plus e equals f, it can solve for us d minus e equals f, and it can solve for us d plus e plus f equals zero. We're going to go with this last one here, d plus e plus f equals zero. We're going to talk about uh, forces in equilibrium. And forces in equilibrium sum up so that the sum of all of them equals zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with three vectors and we want to add them up such that their sum equals zero. Okay. And so what we get to do here is we get to, de to define vectors D and E um, using the magnitude by, by telling the magnitude of those vectors and the angle those vectors are with respect to the positive x axis. And then the simulation calculates what f should be such that d plus e plus f equals zero. Okay, so we've got d and e and then f is, is the um, vector we need so that the sum of all these equals zero. Okay, so the first pre-lab question you're going to be asked is using this simulation, we are going to consider two forces d and e. The force D has a magnitude of eight newtons at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the X axis. So I'm gonna come over here. The magnitude of my vector D was eight newtons. So I'm gonna give that eight newtons, okay? Newtons is a unit of force. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, below. And then I want the angle of this vector with respect to the X axis to be 45. So I'm gonna increase that to 45. So actually, if I take this vector and move it 
and put it right here in the center of my coordinate system, uh, there we can kind of see that this angle here with respect to the positive x-axis is 45 for vector d. The magnitudes for these problems are going to be different for you, but the angles um, for vectors d and e are going to be the same. And then also it looks like my force E has a magnitude of eight newtons as well at an angle of minus 45 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So uh, it's already here at eight, but I want it to be minus 45 degrees here. All the while I'm doing this, the simulation is solving for what F needs to be such that the sum of all these vectors together gives me zero. So here I've got vector D, here I've got vector E. They both have the same magnitude. One is 45 degrees above the axis, one is 45 degrees below the axis. And then here is vector F, such that the sum of D plus E plus F equals zero. And so we see that vector F is actually pointing off along the negative X direction. So if I click on vector F up here on the top, we'll see vector F's magnitude, 11.3 Newtons. We'll see its angle with respect to the positive x-axis, which I guess this one is going with the minus 180 degrees, so it's going this way. We've got the x component of this vector, minus 11.3 newtons. It has no y component because it's all along the x-axis, okay? And so you will be given the magnitude and the angle for vectors d and e, and using the simulation, you're gonna see what the vector f should be such that the sum of all of those equals zero. And um, you will just click on that vector f and you'll come up here and get its magnitude. And that's what you'll plug in into, um, into the Canvas quiz for this first question. Unless you want to solve it by hand, you certainly can do that. Um, but I'm letting you do this with the simulation for these first two, okay? So the cool thing about this problem in particular is that both of these vectors, d and e, have an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the x-axis, they both have the same magnitude too. So that means that the, the, both of their x components of the vector along the x direction are gonna be the same magnitude. Both of their y components are also gonna be the same magnitude, but d's y component is gonna be pointing up and E's Y component is going to be pointing down, but they're the same size. So when you add them together, they're going to cancel out with each other. And so that makes F's Y component zero, since we have to sum all of them up to equal zero anyway. But the uh, X component then of F will be twice as long as the X component of any of these two, because you're adding those X components together, and so the sum of all of our vectors, again, has to equal zero. And so that means that F here has to be opposite twice the magnitude of the X components of either D or E, twice that, but in the opposite direction, such that the sum of all of them together gives us zero. So you're gonna practice and play around with that. But now I'm gonna drag these vectors over and we're gonna add them graphically, okay? So here we have vector D. I'm gonna add vector E onto the tip of vector D. And now I'm going to add vector f on to the tip of vector e. And so if d plus e plus f equals zero, then when I add them graphically tip to tail like this, they're all going to touch uh, like what you see right here. And then the arrows will all be pointing along kind of the same direction. If you were to be a little ant and traverse this path, you would continue along this path. And when you end up at vector f at your end, you are back at your starting point again. So then the sum of all these vectors together equals zero if we can add up the vectors tip to tail like this and the tip of our very final vector, vector f is pointing toward the tail of our very first vector, vector d. And for the next question, we're gonna keep the page just like it is. Um, but we are going to change the magnitude and angle for vectors D and E, and we're gonna see what vector F should be in that situation. So for the next question, for the values that I have on the quiz right in front of me, um, we have force D with a magnitude of 10 newtons and an angle of 65 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. Angle E, or sorry, force E, has a magnitude of four newtons here 
at an angle of 150 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. So now we see E is coming around. And then the whole time the simulation was calculating what F should be such that D plus E plus F equals zero. And so we're being asked, what is the Y component of vector F such that this equation is satisfied? And um, in order to find out what the X and Y components of vector F are, just be sure you've clicked on them. And then up here, we see that vector F must have a magnitude of 11.1 newtons an angle of minus 93.9 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis, an x component of 8 in the 0.8 in the negative x direction, and a y component of 11.1 .1 in the negative y direction. So here, oh, what is the y component of vector f such that d plus e plus f equals 0? I'll click on vector f, I'll come up here and find its y component, and then I'll enter that as my answer for the quiz. And then um, also we could, we could uh, move our vectors around again so that you can see the graphical vector addition and you can see that D plus E plus F equals zero.